Welcome back to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and thank you for watching my tutorial video. This is the second video. The first one we covered installing Essential from scratch using a CD running through the initial setup wizards all the way through configuring the network interfaces and setting up some basic configurations for email and LDAP. In this video we're going to go a little more in depth. We're going to activate some of the modules and then configure these uh, different modules. So let's continue. We're going to go to the dashboard. And once the dashboard loads, we're going to go to module status. And right off the bat here, I'm going to turn off the firewall. Uh, in most cases, you're probably behind a router firewall, and you should have your firewall protection through that. If you are somewhat of a firewall administrator, you can always turn this on and there's a lot of really good aspects to the firewall in Zential, but that's not going to be covered in this tutorial video. Next we're going to choose DHCP. The nice thing here it gives you a little uh, brief overview of what it's going to, you know, activate. Users and groups, definitely. The activation of some of these modules take a moment. And as you can see, there are quite a few options FTP, Jabber, go to mail. Jabber is very nice. It's, you can use it as an internal uh, communication server if you'd like. The clients you can use are Empathy or Pigeon, and they work very well. And scroll down, file share indefinitely. We want to set up a domain controller using Samba. And the nice thing is this integrates Samba and LDAP for you all in one shot. That way you don't have to go around and configure two different environments. Zential pretty much does it all for you. It's a really a user-friendly environment. And user corner. I guess we can turn that on, try to cover that. This gives the user a few features such as uh, setting up external mail to their uh, mail client or if they want to be able to change your password. Webmail we're not going to do, we're going to use the groupware instead. This groupware is really good. I put it on the same level as a Zimbra or a Exchange server. It has wonderful calendars. It provides you with the active sync option, which they call ZPush. You can synchronize your iPhones, iPads, tablets with it. You have the remote wipe, wipe option if you install a certain plugin. Uh, shared calendars, global address book. It's, it's really, really a good groupware. And if we have time, we'll do printer sharing. Okay pretty much it. Just click on save. So it'll take a minute or so to run through the process of saving the modules. Looks like it's finishing up. We'll go back to the dashboard. And now out of all these options, um, we're going to go with the DNS first. We're going to configure the DNS server. So let's click on the DNS server. And we're going to add a forwarder. Now the forwarder is going to forward your DNS queries out to the internet. Or it depends upon how you set it up. You can set an internal DNS query to, to access um, internal uh, static A records. But in this case we're more concerned about just getting um, the PC out to the internet. So I have an internal DNS server. Now if you don't have an internal DNS server, you can just use the IP address of your router. Or if you happen to know the IP addresses of your ISP, the DNS information they had provided you, um, you can also use that. But that information is usually static or it's on your router. So your router IP address would be just fine. And we'll just click Add. And we're going to add a domain. keep it the same as my mail alias I set up earlier for the email 
you don't have to I just like to keep everything uniform and then we just save it just take a moment to save that's pretty much the first step in the DNS portion next let's go to the DHCP and we're going to pick an interface remember the zero is my outside interface my internal interface is one and let's choose a default gateway we'll do a custom IP address for my router and it's dot one that's my uh, router IP address search domain we we'll use the one we just set up uh, Zencho domain and that's the one we just set up and that's pretty much it hit change to save that and your DHCP range is pretty much standard uh, 1 through 254 we're actually going to set up a range I like to keep everything with the same, with the same naming schema I'm going to set this up so it only gives out a range of 100 IP addresses um, you can set it however you like this is just for the benefit of the video um, the nice thing about this anything I static under a hundred like a printer or a copier um, won't have an IP conflict when the IP addresses are being given out on the network or you can open it open it pretty much up for the entire range and just set fixed addresses that comes down to personal preference okay and we'll just save that and we're just about there and we'll test this uh, DNS and DHCP now the DNS and DHCP are basically set up. What we need to do now is get them talking. You know, when you pick up an IP address, you want it to create a record, an A record, and also a reverse DNS record. So let's go back into DHCP, choose our interface again, and there it is, dynamic DNS option. All you have to do pretty much here is just check it. Click on change save it and we're off and rolling takes a second to run the module saving DHCP module process great let's go back to dashboard I'm going to bring up my Windows prompt and we're going to see if we can pick up an IP address off of this new environment we just configured slide this over Make sure I spell it correctly. So we're going to release my current IP address. Press the up arrow key. And let's just flush the DNS. And let's renew it. And hopefully the IP I picked up is off of uh, mytest.local. And there it is. Mytest.local. Excellent. You slide this out of the way. And let's go back into the DNS. Now, if you want to set up a few static records, you know, you want to put uh, records in that are fixed, static IPs for copiers and printers and routers and switches, you can just go into um, your domain and host names. And we can just add one real quick here. The IP address of the server is uh, 2.90, so we'll give it a name. We'll call it uh, BM. Actually, we'll give it the same name my test and 10.0.2.90 and we'll add that and you can populate that the dynamic will also respond um, on the network but since these are static they're not registering DNS entry so we're gonna have to create one great and let's go back to the dashboard real quick here And as you can see, I've already picked up an address, and that is the name of my computer. And let's just try to ping the record I just created, the my test. Bring over the prompt. And it's replying just fine. So that's pretty much it.
it's relatively a simple process. So now DNS and DHCP is now running on this central environment. And that's pretty much it. So watching, thank you for watching this tutorial video. Uh, the next video I'm going to do is going to be on using LDAP file sharing and setting up your primary domain controller. So thank you for watching this tutorial video on Zential, setting up your DNS and DHCP. And thank you for visiting thejonas.net and have a nice day.